This is not quite what I expected for dumplings. I don't even want to open or touch or look at this. Ah. Oh, <laughs> it moved. It's very bright under these hot lights. <laughs> I haven't even started. Hi, I'm Zhang, a YouTube chef and professional cookbook author. And I'm Nate, her husband, king of mixing and reheating leftovers. And, and today, today we're, we're going to be, be making, making dumplings. dumplings. So we're going to be ordering our ingredients from the Kroger app and then we're going to be switching them. So I'm just going to sort through the app and take a look at the weekly ads to see if I can find some savings and deals. I love that there's also personal offers. I like it for the fuel points. Thank you to Kroger for sponsoring this video. I decided to throw Zhang a curveball by buying taco ingredients and it only cost me $17 for everything I bought. There you go. And my inspiration for these dumplings were a little more traditional. I spent $101.21 but with all the app savings and deals, it came out to $85.25. Good luck. This is what I have to work with. We have ground beef, taco seasoning, Mexican style cheese, our dumpling wrappers. Uh, I see where he's going with this. An onion, avocado, and a jalapeno. No idea what this stuff is. I know dumpling wrappers, right? Do I have two of these? No. Lobster. More pantry stuff. Onion. Ugh. Vegetables. Parsley or cilantro? Not sure. Truffle oil. Okay. This is not quite what I expected for dumplings, but I think I have a good idea where I'm gonna take this. Okay, I guess I make a filling. I make a filling first, right folks? Okay, so I'm gonna start by chopping up my onion really finely, going for like a taco filling, but it's gonna be kind of like a meatball. What's this, ginger? It's gonna be mostly pork and lobster tail. I know I need to cook it in uh -huh. sherry, cooking wine. I just don't know if I should mix these together or cook this first separately. I don't even want to open or touch or look at this, but maybe I should work on the vegetable first. Could have gotten me so many other things, but I guess we're just gonna have this a little more simple. All right, got my onions in, and now I'm going to add the beef. So I'm glad he had the foresight to get me some taco seasoning because he's actually pretty smart. I'm just gonna add the whole packet in. And then because I want every bite to be cheesy, I'm gonna add the cheese in. Probably like half the packet. Let's see, okay, here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna do the pork first with some cabbage and parsley and corn, but then I have to cook the corn. Or does the corn cook with the filling? <laughs> Hold on, do I get a lifeline call? Very bright under these hot lights. <laughs> I haven't even started. What I'm gonna do with the avocado or the jalapeno, I may just mash it to make like a little guac on top of it, but I'm gonna add a little bit of the jalapeno first into the beef mixture to give it a nice little kick. Oh, okay, I have a, a, a little idea of what I'm gonna do with the avocado. We got this. Jalapenos in. I feel like the seasoning should get it salty enough with enough flavor that I don't need to add anything else in there. This is such a typical Nate kind of dish, just kind of inventing fusion things. This is basically his style of cooking and what my kids generally love to eat. It smells pretty good and honestly, it kind of reminds me of having chimichangas growing up. Where's my burner? I'm gonna start chopping. At least I'm being productive by chopping something. This is a lot of cabbage. Very small but even slices. Do you know how to hold a knife? You hold it like this. I think. No, that doesn't feel right. Do I need to wash it? Oh well, it cooks right. Cabbage is such like filler vegetable. No one eats it. I have a better idea. Technology. You know what? Kill two birds with one stone. Cut that in half. We're ready to start building. No, what about the corn? How many of you guys grew up having chimichangas after school? That was the thing that we did, me and my sister. It was always the frozen ones and this smells exactly like it. So with the pot stickers, you always wanna put the filling inside on the floured surface. Flour just helps to grip the filling a little bit better. 
So I'm just gonna spoon a little bit in here, wet the edges. We're just gonna do like a half moon shape because I want it rather flat for the cooking process. And this is like my taco ravioli dumpling. I forgot to chop this up. I'll wash it this time. It's very fresh. Oh. Almost cut myself. Some greens in there, you know, my wife would say. This is pickled ginger and it's very interesting. I wonder if I should put some in here. Very fragrant dumpling coming your way. Everything's in my way. Oh shoot, there's plastic in there. Just kidding. Here's what I think we're gonna do. We're gonna make this separately. We're gonna cook the lobster and cook that. And then we make the filling all together. Did I add this already? You know, you watching me is making it worse. I have no creativity. I'm gonna add a corn. I think she has a tool for that too. Beautiful. And now this guy, lobster tail wild caught. So anytime I make dumplings for the family, it becomes kind of a whole family process where we all make our own designs. And plus the process goes a lot faster. It's kind of therapeutic. I'm excited to see how much cheese is going into each dumpling because every bite is gonna be bursting of cheesiness. I was a little bit skeptical of the ingredients at first, but now as it's coming together, I think we got this. Nate doesn't eat lobster or any shellfish. He's not allergic to it, he just doesn't like it. So it's quite the challenge for him. Oh, there's little feet. <laughs> oh, I cannot do this. I cannot do this. Oh, <laughs> it moved. I just want the white part, right? I, I cannot do seafood, people. This is awful. I mean, it looks really good quality wise, but I can't even remove the white part. Kind of looks like sorbet though. I think I got like a piece of the foot in there. Maybe I should cut it. Okay, I'm gonna defrost it a little bit. It's not even coming out at all. I need help. The pro chef comes to the rescue. See? I've actually never cooked a lobster tail before either. I learned this in Mrs. Doubtfire, a 90s classic. Thank you for your assistance. You need a little bit of salt, pepper. These are very thin, I got two. Just make sure they're sealed, right? I know that you don't want them to like explode. That's why I had to remove some of the meat and then I'm just gonna tuck it in. <sighs> How many more to go? Let's see, I made, <laughs> I have like enough for a hundred here. <laughs> that looks pretty good. There we go. Look at that, pretty good, huh? All right, we have a plate full of dumplings. Before I cook them off, I'm gonna go ahead and make our sauce for it. We have our avocado. I'm gonna cut a little bit more onion. Add a little bit of the jalapenos in there. I always keep a few tricks up my sleeve or in my back pocket, and in this case, I have a lime. Actually, I have this lime I bought from Kruger last week for my meal prepping and I still have it available, thankfully, so I'm gonna use it for this. Call it a cheat, I call it being resourceful. <gasps> I should have saved some of that taco seasoning for this. Dang, that's okay. This will be very fresh and very clean. A little salt. And then we're gonna mash it up. Ooh, that actually looks really good. Yes. We're gonna call this an onion avocado relish. So I could do this one of two ways. I could either deep fry it like a chimichanga, or I could do it the pan fried, crispy, steamed way, which is what I was going to do. I think I'm gonna do it my usual way just to make sure the fillings are nice and cooked through. So with that, I'm gonna add some oil and a little bit of water. These are actually, I'm kind of proud of these. I did develop some good technique, I think. I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I hear it boiling, so let's add the dumplings in. They're gonna be sticky, should I spray it though? Because I don't want them to stick. Oil and 
and water usually don't mix, but in the pot sticker case, it definitely does. It just gets it nice and like crispy and steamed so you don't get a rubbery wrapper. Okay, so now I'm just gonna lie it down on the edges. Now I'm gonna cover it up and let it cook for a little bit before I let it finish just pan frying. Three minutes, I don't know. We'll see how they turn out. I'm just gonna separate it with my chopsticks. Ah, oh, I broke one, that's okay. That is a good looking piece of dumpling right there, wow. I got the best looking ones, now I'm just gonna try to arrange them in a fancy way. It's all about the plating. Let's make it look like it's fancy, because it is fancy. It's very gourmet. What I'm gonna do is just add a little bit of my avocado onion relish, and then inspired by crispy rice tuna, I add a little piece of jalapeno right on top. It's gonna get a little messy, but I wanted to like drizzle this on top and make like a little pool. So we'll just do that. And here is my, what would you call this? A beefy cheese chimichanga dumpling. Hope it's cooked. Mm. Okay, we nailed this one. Clearly, I'm gonna be the winner. It's good, but I don't like lobster. Hello. Hello, smells good. Okay, tell me your inspiration behind picking your ingredients. You kept saying chimichanga, but it was just the taco. The taco? Because like tacos have all of those elements. I don't know. You made it crispy, so kind of like nachos or something. Yeah, I kind But I guess it could be like a chimichanga. I wasn't really sure where you were going with this. So for my ingredients for you, I was kind of going for like a soup dumpling, but then I got inspired by soup, and then I wanted to make it really hard for you and make it kind of like lobster chowder, which is where the lobster and the corn came in to kind of like throw a curveball. Otherwise, the rest of the ingredients are pretty traditional dumpling recipe. What do you think of my plating? It's actually really beautiful. Go ahead and try mine. Okay, cheers. Mmm. Mm. It's really good. I like the corn in there. It's like a crunchy sweetness and then the truffle, like you add a lot. A fair bit, yeah. <laughs> I taste a lot of truffle. Not too much lobster though. Is it salty enough? Could use a little more salt. That was really good. What'd you think of the chimichangas? I like it. Yeah, <laughs> I knew you That's would. That's what dumplings should be. <laughs> oh my gosh, no, 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 no. A little bit of extra stuff, you know? That's a lot. It's great. Anyways, be sure to check out the Kroger app for more deals and savings and challenge your spouse to cook something fun like this too. Give this video a like, comment if you enjoyed Nate's cooking appearance and if you want to see more. We'll see you guys next time. Bye. Bye.